Hi there and welcome back. This is Jenna from McGuire. So glad you're here. Today I have a fun technique and a fun fold card design for you. I call this technique stenciled stamping where you actually stencil on your stamps for a unique look. And then the fun fold card design is a simple one that you can do with a variety of products. All right, let's go ahead and get started. For both of my cards, I'm using an incredible new bundle from Gina K Designs called Create Friendship. This is an amazing bundle because it can be used in so many different ways. It includes a three layering stencil set. In this layering stencil set, you can create a large like floral bouquet and you can create a layered butterfly. Now, I honestly cannot find my stencil set, so I'm not using that today, but do know that's included. There is also a six by eight stamp set that I'll be using. Coordinating dies, and those dies work with both the stencils and with the stamp set. There's also a layered friendship word die set, so you have the word friendship and the shadow for it. And before I start stamping, I wanted to just show you two cards that I created at the Simon Says Stamp Create event a few weeks ago. I taught these in a class and we used the same Create Friendship bundle. So these were created using the stencils along with the dies. I'm not making these in today's video. I just wanted to show you a couple more examples so you can see the variety that you get from this bundle. All right, let's start our stamping. Here is a look at that six by eight stamp set and the coordinating dies. Again, that large die there is to cut out the large bouquet you can stencil with this bundle, but I am focusing on using those floral leaf and butterfly stamp images today. I will also be using the masks and filler stencils from Gina K Designs. This actually comes with that stencil, a circle mask, and an oval mask. My oval mask is also lost, but I am just using the stencil alone today. We'll be using the dot and the stripe portion. This stencil is great for techniques. I'll talk more about that later. I have taken out the solid butterfly image from the stamp set. So this is the first layer because it's the most solid. And I have a piece of cardstock in my Misty stamping tool, and I'm just rubbing a dry cloth on that stamp so it'll take ink better. I am stamping this first layer with a soft color of ink. I'm using Gina K dye inks today. This is the light lilac color. I will also be using light orchid and light carnation. Now these are sets of inks that are available in light, medium, and dark, which makes layering easy, but you could use absolutely any inks for this at all. So again, I'm just stamping a bunch of butterflies, starting with the lightest ink and most solid image first. Now you could move on to the additional layer images of this butterfly, but I'm gonna add a little interest to it by stenciling on my stamp. So if you look closely at this photo, you'll see there are little polka dots on our butterflies. I did that with a stencil. So I still have that same solid butterfly in my stamping tool in the same position. I'm taking this mass and fillers stencil and lining up the dot portion over that solid butterfly. I'll use a piece of tape, this is Altenew Satin Tape, to tape it onto the door of my Misty up there at the top of the screen. This will create a little hinge so I can flip it back and forth so that we can stencil on our stamp. Now I chose to use Gina K White Pigment Ink for this stenciling. So I will use a blending brush to pounce the ink over the stencil onto the clean stamp. Now I chose to pounce the ink because that way I don't have to worry about the stencil moving, but honestly the stencil stays still because it kind of sticks to the clean stamp. I'm using a blending brush to apply the white pigment ink and I only use this brush for white. Once I have inked over the stencil, I will flip the stencil up and then stamp down onto that light purple stamping we did before. I'm gonna repeat this process so I get a little more white ink of, on these little dots. So you'll see I just flip the stencil up and down so that I'm able to stamp with the stencil. So now we have a polka dot first layer. I'll rotate my cardstock and now we can repeat the process by adding white dots on our light orchid butterfly. Now this is something you could do with a variety of inks. I like the look of these white dots on our butterflies, but you could do like a dark color here, a dye ink, you could use oxide ink, whatever inks you want for doing the stenciling on your stamp. 
I do recommend using that tape as a hinge so you can be sure it's placed in the same time each time you repeat the process. You'll notice that this works really well with this solid butterfly and this dot stencil. However, you could do this technique with any fine detail stencil like a dot, a stripe, a plaid, and with any solid stamp. So a solid stamp like this butterfly, silhouette images would be great for this. So try this with some products you have. Now that I've done the white dot stenciling onto that solid layer of light butterfly, it's time to add the layers from that stamp set. So for this bottom detail portion of the butterfly wings, I'm using the medium color. So we use the lilac, the orchid, and the carnation in the light colors. So far now I'm using the medium shades. I really appreciate that uh, Gina came out with the three shades that go together, but do know you can mix and match different color in here. So this butterfly that I'm using is a layering butterfly, right? So we're going to kind of hide some of those white polka dots by doing the stamping on top. You could de definitely do this technique with just a solid stamp that isn't layering and your stenciling would show up more. But I really wanted to add all the layers today. And the cool thing is, is the white pigment ink dots that we put down somewhat resist this darker stamping that we're putting on top, which really adds to a fun look. I'll give you a closer uh, look at that in a moment. But here I have the third layer of the butterflies, which gives kind of the inside detail to the wings. And I'm doing this with the darkest colors of lilac, orchid, and carnation. So you can start to see how that white dot stenciling is resisting this darker ink we put on top and look at this fun result. It definitely is a great way to kind of change up the look of your layering stamps or solid stamps. And here's a comparison. On the right is just the stamping of the butterfly without the stenciling added. And you can see the fun difference that we get. Now before we use these butterflies on a card, let's go ahead and do the same technique to create these floral images. This time instead of polka dots, we'll do some stenciling with the stripes. So I'm stamping one of the florals with the medium orchid ink. But before we move on, I'm adding a little bit of darker color at the center of this solid image using a small blending brush. This is the dark orchid color, which coordinates nicely with that medium color we've already stamped. I'm applying some of that dark color at the center of the stamp with that blending brush and then stamping it, which gives us that bit of darker color towards the center, giving us a look of dimension. It takes just a little bit of time, but really can add a lot to solid images like this. Now, when we add the stripes to this, some of that will go away. You won't see it as much, but I wanted to demonstrate that while we were here creating these flowers. So I will continue to stamp additional flowers using the same colors of inks I used before and adding a bit of darker color towards the center with a blending brush. This time I use the light lilac and I'm adding some medium towards the center. This technique of adding darker color towards the center also works really well over a stencil to give that look of dimension. After creating some florals with the orchid colors, I repeated the process using the lilac colors. Now it's time to add some stenciling to our stamping. So I have the stamp in the same position and I'm adding that mask and filler stencil so that the stripe portion is over the stamp. And again, I created a hinge with a piece of tape on my misty door. I'm applying white pigment ink over that stencil so the ink is ending up on that stamp but in a striped pattern. And then I'll flip up the stencil, close the door on my stamping tool, and it'll add the stripes onto my orchid colored flower. And I'll repeat this process just to make the white a bit more intense. Now my white ink pad is getting a little dry. I need to re-ink it. So if you have a juicier ink pad, you may only have to do this once. And if you want your stripes to be darker, you could always stamp with a darker color ink instead of the white pigment ink. Really any ink would work for this. Here I have rotated my cardstock so I can repeat the process on this darker orchid flower. 
So here I am showing you how to do stenciling on a stamp image. If you would rather add this stenciling detail on a stenciled image, I'm gonna to link to a video where Gina Kay has done that before. It's an amazing technique where you can do stenciling on top of stenciling to add fun dots or stripes. And I will link to that video up here on the top right. I just wanted to show you, you can use your stencils on stamping to create fun detail. So I repeated this process with another of the floral images from the stamp set, and now we have lots of striped flowers. I also need some leaves to go with my flowers, so I am using the spruce inks from Gina K Designs along with the three leaf images from the stamp set. So the spruce ink, there's a light, medium, and dark. And once again, I'm adding a little bit of darker color to the center or the bottom of the leaves using the darker ink and a blending brush. Then we can line up that same stripe stencil and add the stenciled white stripes onto our leaves. So we'll end up with striped leaves and striped florals. And just a reminder, this stenciled stamping technique works great with any solid images. So if you have large silhouette images, solid dots, anything like that, along with a detailed stencil, so maybe a lattice or a stripe or dot stencil. You can use those together to create a new look. So next up, I am die cutting out all of the different shapes. I still do have the details to add to the flowers and butterflies, but I decided to do that after the die cutting. I have my Misty stamping tool and I've placed in it a Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. Onto the sticky mat, I'm placing the negative space of my butterfly and floral die cuts. And then into those openings, I'm popping our stamped die cuts. I'll line up the body of the butterfly with my stamped in die cut image, and then the center of the flowers also. Then I can stamp all of these at once with black ink. The reason I die cut them first is because I didn't want to make my butterfly body too high or too low, and then the die cut wouldn't line up with it. I felt it was better to die cut first, then stamp. And I will repeat this process with all of my die cuts. Now that we have the die cuts ready, let's do the fun fold card design. This is something that you can use with a variety of stamps and die cuts that you have. I have my scoreboard here along with a piece of white cardstock that is five and a half inches tall and eight and a half inches wide. I will do two score lines, one at one and a quarter of an inch and the other at five and a half inches. When we fold along these two score lines, we will end up with a card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches with a fun kind of offset gatefold design. So this is just something fun and different we can do. Store-bought cards don't open like this, so it's fun to make them handmade. Next up, I have my Gina K Designs Swiss Dots Embossing Folder, one of my favorite of all times. And I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I did mist, th mist that with a bit of water. I'm running this through my Spellbinders die cut machine, following the sandwich instruct instructions for a 2D embossing folder. You should be able to use this embossing folder with any die cut machine you may have. Just follow the instructions. This will give me a fun polka dot background on my card, adding just a bit of interest. I love that Swiss dot. I also have a piece of purple cardstock cut to the same size. I misted that with water, and I'm running that through the Gina K Designs lattice embossing folder. Using the same sandwich, this is again a 2D embossing folder. So I thought these two basic patterns would add some fun texture to our card. I trimmed down the purple piece so it's a one and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall, and I'll glue that on the smaller flap of our card. This is just adding some interest. You could definitely just leave it plain white note card if you prefer. Then the white polka dot panel, I trimmed to be three inches wide by five and a half inches tall, and I'll glue that on the larger flap. This next step is optional, but I'm taking two pieces of temporary tape and rolling it to put inside of the card so that the flaps stay closed as we assemble the rest of my card. 
I will glue a bunch of these floral and leaf images so that they are on the white portion of the card front, not the purple portion. So when you put glue on the back of these flowers, you want to be careful that the glue is only on like the left hand side so that the glue doesn't hang off onto the purple portion. So again, these die cuts are just glued to that large white flap. This will give us a fun kind of hidden look to where the card opens. I'm using a mix of foam squares and Gina K liquid adhesive, the Connect adhesive, to add these. Now I have placed my leaves and florals so I can open this up, make sure that I didn't glue anything shut, and put something heavy on it while it dries. For a sentiment, I'm using the Gina K Designs Radiant Roses Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. There's also an embossing folder that goes along with this, but I'm just using the sentiments. I stamp so very grateful with black ink on white cardstock and cut it out. And then I cut two additional die cuts from some scrap paper. And I'm gluing that behind our stamped sentiment just to give it some strength and dimension. I want it to pop up off of our background and really stand out. You'll notice when I flip this over, there's some stamping on the back of that die cut. I reuse my scraps, my mess ups all the time for adding layer to my die cuts. So don't throw anything away. You can always put it to use. And I'll place this right onto my textured dotted background so it overlaps a bit with the florals, pulling everything together. I wanted to add a little bit of shine to this card, but I didn't feel like I should add any bling to it. So instead I'm using my Sakura black glaze pen and I'm just kind of dotting it on top of the black stamping dots we did at the center of the flowers. This gives us a tiny bit of raised but beautiful shine, which really stands out at the center of those flowers. So here's a look at the completed card. I did add extra floral and leaf die cuts to the inside for a bit of a surprise. And this card does stand up nicely on display. Here's a closer look at that stenciled stamping we did where we put the stripes on the florals. You can also see the bit of shine that we have added to the center of the flowers using that black glaze pen. We also have the fun texture of the embossing folders on those two flaps of the fun fold card design. Now let's finish up the butterfly card and I'm creating my card base the exact same way. I have a five and a half by eight and a half piece of white cardstock. I'm scoring at one and a quarter inches and five and a half inches. And then I'll fold along both of those score lines and the two ends will meet up there together in the middle. Now this time I am only using the dot embossing folder. So I took a piece of white cardstock that was four and a quarter by five and a half inches, ran that through my die cut machine with the Swiss dot embossing folder. And I cut that panel so that I have a piece that is three inches wide and one that's one and a quarter inches wide. And I'm gluing those to the flaps of my fun fold card, just like we did before, but this time only with white cardstock and the dot pattern. Now I did want there to be a little definition where the um, flaps of this card line up. So I cut a really thin strip of white cardstock and I'm gluing that right along the left hand flap. So right along the edge. I have taped my card closed, but the flaps will still open nicely. This cardstock strip is just along that left flap. To make it stand out more, I doubled that up. So I have two thin strips of white cardstock there. This could be skipped if you want to, but I just felt it gave a little bit of definition because you'll actually see the edge of the gatefold card with this particular design. Next up, I have die cut three additional white butterfly die cuts, and I'll glue each of these to the back of our three stamped butterflies. This will just give it some support as half of these butterflies will be hanging off the edge of our card. So I'm putting glue on the back left of my first butterfly and I'm gluing him on the card right up against the bottom. Then I'll put adhesive on the back left of my next butterfly and glue that right across the top of the card. And I'm lining up the bodies of my butterflies with that white cardstock strip that we just added. Then I'll put my third butterfly in the middle. I decided not to use the carnation butterfly up there on the top left. I'll save that for later. For a sentiment, I'm using the Gina K Designs Enjoyable Greeting stamp set. I white heat embossed it on black cardstock and then cut it into a thin strip to add right there at the center of our middle butterfly. 
And to add a little bit of shine, I am again using my black glaze pen to fill in the bodies of the butterfly. This will give a teeny bit of dimension, but a lot of shine. A tip when using this black glaze pen, I like to kind of dot it onto my paper, which makes that ink flow and gives better results. And then I just kind of move it around with the tip. It does take a few minutes to dry. Now to make my envelope match, I thought I would use the embossing folder on the flap, but there's a little thing with this. The embossing folders from Gina K are big enough for a five by seven background, which I love, but that prevents the uh, embossing folder to go through your die cut machine sideways. So to make it fit, I have to run the uh, embossing folder through twice, doing two halves of my em envelope flap. So you saw I lined it up with the left edge there and ran it through my die cut machine. Now I'll move the embossing folder over to the other edge, the right edge of the flap, and just line the dots up with the embossing we've already done. Then I can run it through the die cut machine again, and this will cause the whole envelope flap to have that dot embossing that matches the background on our card. I love pulling everything together like that. All right, so here is a look at the completed card. You can see the fun fold card design and that it stands up nicely on display. And those butterflies kind of hang off that side flap, which is a fun surprise too. There's a closer look at those white dots on our layered butterfly stamping. I love the look of those, especially with these bright orchid and lilac colors. You can also see that fun black shine on the body of the butterfly, which just adds a bit of interest. All right, there you have it, a fun way to do stenciled stamping and a unique fun fold card design. I hope you'll give this a try with supplies that you have. If you're interested in what I used, I do link that below in my YouTube description as always. At the end here, I will link to a couple other related videos, one that uses similar technique from Gina Kay. Thanks for spending this time with me. I'll be back soon with more ideas. I'll see you then.